Hey there, I'm Lee Rowley, and this is Lee After Dark. Why? Because there's more to being a business leader than just business. Each episode, one brave entrepreneur ejects the elevator pitch and just gets real. Today, I'd like to welcome David Chislett. David, how are you? I'm well, thanks, Lee. How are you? I'm fantastic. Uh, do you go by David or Dave? I forgot to ask. Uh, or does it matter? I, ch I choose to go by David, but I'm not offended if you choose to call me Dave. David's fine. Uh, we're, uh, we're all about making people happy here. <laughs> Bringing joy to the world, one bow tie at a time and all that nonsense. So, okay. Well, listen, the rules are simple. Uh, for the next 20 minutes, we can talk about anything you want but your business. Right. And then after that, you got five minutes to pitch up a storm. All okay. Right. Now, if we talk about your business, we mess up and slip up. We'll do it. We'll do a one minute demerit right at the end of the pitch time yeah. uh, just to keep everybody honest. But uh, other than that, it's pretty much a free for all. You ready all to right. play? I'm ready to play. Rock on. All right. Let's set the timer. And all right. What do you want to get into for the next 20 minutes? Well, I think what's really interesting, although it's dangerously close to forbidden subjects, is this idea of uh, the myths around being creative. Um, Okay. How many people just seem to think that because they're not Leonardo da Vinci, they have no right to call themselves creative. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. This is a, a huge topic and uh, my audience is filled with creatives and, and a lot of them are entrepreneurs uh, yeah. or, you know, at the beginning stages of, of trying to figure out what to do with that creativity. Right. So uh, as far as the rules, like, yeah. you know, I, my show, my rules, I can rip them up if I want. So, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's totally arbitrary and they're pretty loosey goosey. So don't worry too much about that. Uh, right. so creativity is, is available to everybody. Is that what you're telling me? Or is it intrinsic exactly. to everyone? Right? Yeah. In fact, I, I tend to talk about it as being a capacity rather than a skill or a talent. Oh, right on. Yeah. So, I think the big difference between like somebody who has a job where they have to go to work every day and, and solve problems for people, like someone working on a help desk, you get calls in, they're, in, they're exercising actually the same muscle that someone like Leonardo da Vinci did when he was inventing the helicopter and painting the Mona Lisa. The difference is the mechanical skill set that gets uh, driven through that capacity. Okay, so let's, let's break that down for the, for the layman here. What exactly yeah. does that mean in your day-to-day -day life? Well, it means that on, in your day-to-day -day life, as a human being, you're constantly uh, challenged with situations where you have a piece of information here, a piece of information here, but you need to go over there. And uh, there is no clear pre-existing route, so you have to make one. You have to make mm -hmm. a decision. You have to solve a problem. You have to join the dots and go, oh, hey, hang on a second. There's this option over here. Uh, and to do that, actually, what happens in your brain, according to the MRI scans and the, and the neural research that's been done, is exactly the same thing that somebody like T.S. Eliot would have done when he was coming up with his poetry. Same areas of the brain lights up, same functionality kicks in. Okay, very cool, very cool. Yeah. So, so how do we how do we get to that? Because I'm I'm envisioning, and I know uh, people who fit this profile, uh, yeah. people who if you uh, if you if you hand them a process and you walk them through the process, uh, you know, uh, bounce the red ball. Okay. You know, and you can teach them if you see a red ball, pick it up and bounce it. But then you hand them a blue ball and they freak. Yeah. You know, uh, and so for somebody like that to say, okay, you have creativity available to you that you're not tapping into, they're probably going, bullshit. Yeah. They so, go, yeah. <laughs> so, so what do we do with that? Well, look, I think just because you have the capacity doesn't mean to say that you are in a position to exercise it, that you have any experience uh -huh. exercising it or possibly okay. even any desire to exercise it. Because one of the things about creativity is that it requires you to deal with stuff that you know nothing about. So somebody who's gonna freak out because there's a blue ball probably doesn't really like stepping outside of their box. Okay. So, but that doesn't mean to say they can't, they just don't want it. And that's fine as well. I mean, I don't have an issue with that. If you wanna stay in the box, stay in the box. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing is though is that, that people like that sometimes tend to be drawn to creatives like you know you or i and they're saying okay well how do i get that yeah you know you and that's that's the yeah. interesting thing because then you just like okay well how do you how do you see the sun come up yeah you, you've got to let go um you've got to release your assumptions and this idea that 
it's so important that you know absolutely everything. I mean, perfectionists, for example, quite often struggle to be, you know, to let stuff go in the same way that people who, who really, really identify with rules and roles uh, struggle to let things go. The thing is, though, that if you don't let stuff go, you never discover anything new. And where creativity happens is at the border between what we know and what we don't know. Okay, so let's unpack that. What does that mean? Well, what that means is, is that um, you know, we're constantly navigating new paths between pre-existing data sets, for lack of a better word. Okay. And that if you stick to the pattern, if you do the same thing you did yesterday, because that's what we've always done and that's always brought us X result, you're not going to be able to create a thing new. You've got to step outside of that loop. I mean, that's what old Einstein's supposed definition of madness is all about, right? Doing the same thing over and over every day and right. expecting a different result is insanity. So if you want a different result, you've got to act differently. Right, right. Um, it, it seems to me that there's, that you have to cultivate an, abil an ability to accept incremental change as well. Uh, there's this, like, I, I know so many people who have this idea that they're going to have this, like, breakthrough, this epiphany, yeah. this, ah, and the, you know, the hallelujah and the choruses and the whole thing, and then everything just falls into yeah. place. And yeah. it just, I don't know if it's worked, if it was ever that way for you. For me, I tend to have these little micro epiphanies that, like, just incrementally free me from that version of me that I still think I'm supposed to be. Yeah, I think, well, actually, I don't, I don't know if it's even really important whether it's a huge flash of light or, or it's incremental. Okay. What, what is important, though, is that the way it's portrayed to us in society is that it's a huge flash of light, that it's a genius moment, that the muse comes down from on high and taps you on the head and it's, Whoa! Right, sure. And therefore, and therefore, incremental change, slow process and piecing the dots together until you end up very far from where you started, isn't kind of really accepted as being true, true creativity it's mm. just not dramatic enough it's not a, not rock and roll romantic ah. magical enough mm -hmm. it's the same thing it's just the, the scale is the difference <laughs> yeah that's, that's true and and not that those epiphanies don't happen and usually at the most yeah. inappropriate times uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but once you once you freed that creativity, they can just you know it's three in the morning. Uh, that's yeah. you know that's how it is for me. Uh, I'll wake up two yeah. thirty three in the morning and boom, there it goes. And but that's not unique either, you know, because no. you, you've stepped away from your focus point. You've stepped away from your routine, and you have allowed your subconscious to continue dealing with whatever it was you're thinking about. No one has good ideas when they're strapped to their monitor. You know, you can do good work. You can, ah, you can read yeah. your path. But those moments, even the small moments of epiphany, tend to happen in the shower at 3 a.m. in the morning, when you're walking the dog, when you're doing anything that the mechanics of which is pretty much automated. Then mm -hmm. unexpectedly, these boom moments happen. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, you know, my clients sometimes look at me, oh, whoops, uh, that's my, I guess I got to give myself a demerit there. Uh, but, you know, the, they look at me strangely sometimes when I, when, when they, when we're talking about a concept and I say, okay, that's going to take a couple walks in the woods to figure out. And they're like, well, what do you mean by that? And I'm like, yeah. I'm paying you to go walk around in the woods. What? You know? Yeah. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, you are. Um, yeah. That Absolutely. works with all sorts of creative disciplines. You're right. It's, it's just when you're in the grind and it can be the hardest thing in the world to do to pull yourself away from whatever it is you want to accomplish yeah. and go, you know what? I just, I just need to let it simmer, you know, right. to, to, to find uh, what is the old Zen saying is that you, you, you know, uh, you can't see through muddy water, let it settle. Something like, you know, it was, you know, that's yeah. that sort of thing of, of letting the, the sediment settle so that you can actually see clearly. That's a huge part of it, but there's also something else going on, which is where you know our rational mind works according to a uh, you know a fairly well-defined structure, logic, and so on. Um, so when you are focused, consciously looking at a problem and applying everything you know and your skill set to solving it, you're bringing rationality to the to the situation. But your unconscious mind is a little wilder than that. And it's got this crazy habit of jamming stuff together that has no business being together in the same room. Mm. Uh, and that happens actually quite slowly, sort of tinkering away in the background. Mm. And most often those eureka moments, even if they're, you know, like not the famous eureka moment, but just like a fairly small realization, 
will come after a period that your unconscious mind has been slowly chewing away at something. And then you finally stop being focused enough on the rational stuff to actually notice this little voice going, I, I, I got it, I, I got it. When you wake up in the morning, quite often you will have the answer to a problem that you were stewing over when you went to bed that night for exactly this reason. Mm, exactly right. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. So I, I, I always dive into this and I want to know what happened, what made creativity, this whole torch that you're carrying, so important to you? Wow, I think I have been involved with doing creative stuff since I was very young. I'm the, okay. I'm the youngest of five children, so I spent a lot of time on my own. Uh, ah. a lot younger than my older siblings okay and as a result i think you know books because it was um you know it was kind of before tv where i grew up so this the fantasy world became very much a big part of my reality ah and um you know when i was in junior school somewhere along the line i discovered that i could also string words together and so my experience as a working adult has always been in, in, in some form of a kind of creative slash entertainment industry. Mm, okay. And then I began to realize that, Hey, hang on a second. This stuff is not just about the arts. This is actually what like successful entrepreneurs and inventors do as well. It's the same process. It's just uh, dressed up in different clothes. Nice. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's quite a realization because, you know, I, I see so many people in the arts uh, who are just, okay, I'm doomed to be poor if I want to do what I want to do. And, you know, it, it, it took me over, really over a decade to parlay what I could do creatively into something that, you know, made sense financially. But, you know, those pathways are there. And especially now with, you know, I didn't grow up in the age of the internet. You know, it, when I, I think when I was a senior in college, there was, I just heard about this thing called the internet. And it was basically, we were chatting with like, you know, some guy in Bangladesh, you know, on this screen that looked like a complete DOS old school, you know, uh, <laughs> blue screen yeah. at death sort of thing. But um, so that's how I wrote, you know, but today the people who are where I was back then, and I'm looking at all the opportunities they have to define what they do creatively yeah. and, and package it and make a living about it and from it and not feel bad about it. Yeah. I don't think that's a coincidence, you know, uh, everyone talks a lot about machine learning and AI and how it's going to take all of our jobs. And I'm like, well, yeah, you know, technology has been taking our jobs for 200 years, but we've always got better jobs as a result, you know, and what you just said is a classic example of that. Young people today on the internet are doing work that you and I would like, what, that's a job when we were <laughs> at university. It's sure. changed. It's changing, you know, so it's, it, I, I think sometimes people are getting really overexcited about completely the wrong stuff. You know, forget the robots, forget AI. Sure, it's going to take a lot of work, but it's going to set us free to do a whole bunch of way more exciting stuff. Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, that, that's, that, that always springs to mind when I hear people talk about, okay, well, you know, people are going to lose opportunities because of automation, da, 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 da. Well, no, because there are always new opportunities to replace that. Yeah. You know, at, at one time, there was a, a, a very big need for people who could make flint arrowheads, you know, and, and yeah. you know, <laughs> and, and blacksmithing, you know, it's worth it and other things that you know, weren't thought of 100 years before that. Um, so, yeah, that's it's just it. going to keep evolving. And, you know, I think that that's that's an important thing for anybody who's going to be an entrepreneur now is just that you have to stay fluid. Yeah, I mean, especially now because, you know, the transition from flint to, to, to metal arrowheads took a long time. You know, now we're in a situation where, you know, today's hot tech is yesterday's junkie. It's going so fast that if, if you're not mentally flexible, you're screwed. Right, you know? right, right, right. Okay, well, we got a couple minutes left in this part. And I want to make sure, because I'm, I'm quite sure you wore this, uh, this t-shirt intentionally and, you know, asked me about yeah, my t-shirt. And so <laughs> I'll bite. What's up with the t-shirt? Yeah, I mean, I like making t-shirts. It's just one of the stupid things I do on the side. Oh, nice. Uh, so this one is my, you know, E equals MC squared. I thought that actually it's, it's such a cool thing. I thought, let me see if I can make something up around creativity. So one of my little things is that the whole thing about creativity is that it actually sets you free because it means you don't have to accept whatever's being presented to you. You can make your own options. So the equation is freedom equals creativity times the sum of options and choices. 
Mm. Okay. The idea being that we can we can really only ever be free if we're applying our innate creative capacity to 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 generate options and to make choices as as opposed to going a buy product A or product B. I love which it. Which is really a choice. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. Uh, uh, Jeff, make sure that, that, that make sure this equation goes in the show notes, okay? Because this is <laughs> this is good stuff, right? Cool. Uh, yeah. This is this is excellent. So see, uh, you know, we make sure that we do our show notes every time for our, our guests, so that you know we can put right. in their links and things like that, and, and hopefully give back to them a little bit for spending time with us. So, uh, any final thoughts on this part of things before uh, we get into the business end of it? Um, I, I think you know, for me, the the thing that kind of got me going was the amount of resistance there is to this idea of creativity. That so many people just like it, it kind of freaks them out. It's just like no, no. As if I'm trying to tell them by telling you that you're creative, I'm telling you that you're not who you thought you were. Uh, and it's, it's so weird that uh, weirdly enough, it's become one of my motivating factors for carrying on digging deeper into the subject. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I, I had a friend who, who loved to talk about, uh, you know, that, that was the, uh, the servants, you know, so like we, you know, we're carving out of a block of marble. Okay, so we're going mm. back to Da Vinci here. We're we're carving out of a block of marble and freeing the image inside, yeah, from everything that's not it, you know. And and I have a I'm afraid there's a whole big story about that that I've long since uh, mangled in my head. Uh, but that idea has always stuck with me of just like it's not you know this isn't who you are, but this is what's inside all these layers of rules and you know, shoulds and guilt and all these crazy things that we've been taught that we need, these games we need, we've been taught we need to play with ourselves. Yeah, um, I, I buy that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and at the core of that is something amazing. And I truly believe that about everyone, I, you know, and, and a lot of it comes from our past, what we've been through. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of it comes with what we do with what we've been through. Yeah, I think that's such a tricky one because, you know, we're very much taught to identify with what we've been through as if what you've done is what you are mm -hmm. as opposed to just something you've experienced. And so that gets knit into a narrative that becomes an identity, which then becomes a set of habits of, that dictates how we behave, which becomes our personality. But it all goes back to a story about what we've done and what that means about who we are. And if it's a story, that means you can change it. But that means you have to give up this idea of who you are. And that's what scares the shit out of us. <laughs> <laughs> I completely understand that. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, having, having been through something like that process myself, uh, you know, I know what that's like to, to know what you're, finally figure out what you're actually capable of and go, oh, well, God, now I gotta, now I gotta pony up, right? Right, now I gotta yeah. change. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. So, okay. Well, look, you have successfully completed the Lee After Dark twenty minute not talking about your business challenge, as far as anyone knows. Well, uh, on the record, right? <laughs> I didn't mention the word business, but if ah, what a potato, potato, whatever. Uh, <laughs> so, I want to make sure, uh, being a man of my word, I want to make sure to give you five minutes to talk about right. uh, how people can talk with you, uh, your business, anything that you want to talk about on that end. The floor is yours, my friend. Thanks very much. Okay, so my business is that I am a creativity activator. So what that means is that I help people unlock this capacity and learn the actual habits and the skills and the routines that will allow you to routinely come up with better ideas, to solve problems, and, you know, just generally to be a little bit more flexible and adaptable in life. I do that through workshops, through one-on-one -on -one consultations and through coaching. And I've got a whole bunch of tools that I share with people. You can find me on the wonderful world, world wide web. Uh, very simple. My site is davidchislett.com. Uh, and there's a great contact form there. I've got a newsletter that you can sign up for. Uh, and at the moment, I'm actually, yeah, man, I read something on Medium, which really hit me. If you sign up for my newsletter now, you get free stuff, like a really nice personal advice thing, which... For some reason, I'd never thought of doing before I read the article on Medium, so it was quite cool. Huh. Um, so yeah, if you are stuck with anything, I use creativity to help people get unstuck. So hit me up, join the newsletter, and uh, I'll see what I can do for you. Sounds fantastic. Any final thoughts? Final thoughts? Well, final, fi many final thoughts. thoughts. Oh, but, okay. 
Yeah, I don't know. I think I just love this kind of thing. I've been uh, very interested in podcasts recently. Uh, I thought I was too old for podcasts. You know, all the cool kids are into it. There's okay. some really cool stuff out there, man. I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, well, the, there's room for us old farts, too. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> I say, yeah, I, we're claiming it. It's just creativity. You know, we're doing it. Yeah, that's that's it. right. Cool. All righty. Well, we are out of time. But if you found Lee After Dark more entertaining and relevant than most of the drag out there, then subscribe to the Lee After Dark YouTube channel. And now get Lee After Dark in your pants. We're on Spotify, Breaker, Pocket Cast, Stitcher, and who the heck knows where else. So you can enjoy us wherever you stick your phone. Until next time, this is Lee Rowley with my new friend, David Chislett. Be present and be well.